I have to be honest, I never thought this video would happen. When it comes to accuracy with your heart rate training zones, it's very important to understand that using a formula is not very accurate. So we're gonna go through a very, very simple field test that you can do on your own that's super accurate, super repeatable, and a way to measure your success through time. Hey team, coach and author Eric Gordon here. We got an epic day. Nah, well, there's a few clouds in the sky, but we got a vibrant view of the Grand Teton, the Teton Range. We're headed into the Grovant for a 10 mile run. See you at the trailhead. So I mentioned I never thought this video would take place. I've been wanting to do a heart rate monitor video for a long time but i was always hesitant because of the lack of accuracy <clears throat> with all the wrist monitoring now you know i think i did my first race with a heart rate monitor 30 years ago this year and we wore chest straps that was so accurate so i've always continued to use a chest strap it never bothered me but i know it bothers some and with the proliferation of more and more optical wrist monitoring. Majority of athletes weren't conditioned to wear chest straps. So I was becoming more and more frustrated as a coach where athletes would only rely on the wrist monitoring, which weren't very accurate. So when Koros reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try out a new watch, and maybe partner for a video series. I was really hesitant. I, I didn't want to get the watch and say, no, it's just not very accurate. It's not what I'm looking for. But I thought about it and here we are, okay? Super accurate. We're gonna get into that. Let's go. A little breezy, about 20 degrees. Should warm up really nicely. Quick warm up before our first climb. All right, we're coming up on the bison, and I just noticed there's a moose right below it. Check this out. Bison up there, moose down here. What a nice way to start the morning run. He's looking right at you. A little breezy. All right, starting to climb. The purpose of my run today is purely endurance. I'm still in my base building phase, so I want to keep everything aerobic, especially on these climbs. So it's important for me to understand what's going to be aerobic for me or where my lactate threshold heart rate is at. So I'm going only by heart rate today. You don't want to keep everything aerobic. So, purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to formulate your lactate threshold to help you for formulate your heart rate training zones. So the reason I partnered with Koros to do this video series, I found that the optical wrist monitoring is super accurate. And I'm super, super confident now in that being accurate for my athletes, so I'm not always hesitant as to how accurate their heart rate numbers are. When it comes to accuracy with your heart rate training zones, it's very important to understand that using a formula is not very accurate. Everybody's heart rate is just like their fingerprint. Everybody's different. So formulas may work sometimes, but I found a lot of times they just don't apply to the individual. So we're gonna go through a very, very simple field test that you can do on your own that's super accurate, super repeatable, and a way to measure your success through time. All right, feeling good. Watching my heart rate, I'm not taking it above zone three today, so I keep it aerobic. 
So just really working on nice quick cadence, staying relaxed, staying patient on these climbs, because again, base building, lower heart rate, keeping it aerobic. Okay, it's just one of those magical days in Jackson Hole. Check this out. The Grand Teton bison herd tend to be just a little bit smaller than the, the Yellowstone herd. Pretty cool, just soaking in the sun, having a little breakfast. Pretty crazy view with the Grand and the Tetons in the background. All right, first climb. Almost just kind of made it feel like a warm up. Feeling really good, sun feels good. And then way back behind me is our next climb. A little early for grizzlies, but they're the real deal and they're here. Keep in mind that in this six video series, we're gonna do a lot of coaching tips on how to utilize your watch, how to utilize heart rate, watts, speed, how to use heart rate for race strategy. Today's purpose is only to establish your lactate threshold as a benchmark, as a working point to go forward with the series. So, like I mentioned, I'm keeping everything aerobic today. The key, oh, we got some, got some deer up here. Uh, sorry. Um, oh, I think it's a little elk, some elk right up on the ridge. Yeah, they're elk, not, not deer. So, when I'm keeping my heart rate lower on these climbs and staying aerobic, I'm training my body to utilize fat as fuel. So that's why it's key to keep my heart rate below lactate threshold, where I start to merge into burning more and more carbohydrates, which I don't want to do right now for this run. Okay, here's the climb. Climb in between nine and 12% grade. So rather steep. It's important for me to focus on my cadence. And this is a good time to work on your efficiency with cadence. If you can run uphill, very steep grade with high cadence, that's gonna translate. That's gonna make all other running with higher cadence so much easier. And the key is to stay patient with heart rate and patient with my cadence. And what I mean by that is you want to have higher cadence, but if you're not patient, you'll try to speed up to get higher cadence and that's not what you want to do. All right, I'm gonna get out of the wind. We're gonna talk about that field test. And we're gonna have a crazy, crazy view up here. How about that? All right, the field test. Like I mentioned, the field test is very, very accurate in developing heart rate training zones. And if we contrast this to going into the lab and paying someone to develop your lactate threshold value and your numbers and your heart rate, lab tests are very expensive. Not everybody can do it. 
More importantly, how you execute a VO2 max test in the lab is with a mask on, on a treadmill, and it's a progressive test. All of that's not functional. Most athletes, if they've never done that, aren't used to doing that. So it is very unnatural way to test. And so again, going back to my field test, which is a one mile test time trial at the track. Okay, why is this so good? Again, it's accurate. Secondly, it's repeatable and free. It doesn't cost you anything. And what's most important about understanding your testing is to be able to measure them frequently throughout your training season. That's not possible going into lab. You might be able to do it once or twice, but we can use this field test, this one mile test, to test frequently to see measurable results. And that's the key. That's the point, really, is to, to, to use this as a way to measure your success and develop our heart rate training zones. So all you're going to do on this simple test is go to the track, do your warm up, do some building of your heart rate to elevate the heart rate. And then you're going to do a one mile time trial as fast and as steady as you can for that one mile distance, collecting your average heart rate and your max heart rate. That's all we need. Okay, and I tell my athletes that a perfect test is feeling like you left a little bit in the tank where you finished and hey, maybe I could have gone just a little bit harder. That's a perfect test rather than throw yourself in to the pain cave where now you don't want to do it again. You have anxiety going into doing it, doing it again. We want to train, we don't want to strain. So what is this one mile test doing? It's eliciting a VO2 max effort, okay? It's not giving us your VO2 max. We're not wanting to work off your max heart rate because that's most, for most people that's fixed. That's not very trainable. We want to work with your heart rate average of a VO2 max effort or velocity. Okay, and we'll talk about speed zones in another video where the key is we're getting your velocity and heart rate effort at a VO2 max effort. Gathering your information, we're using that average heart rate of this one mile test as our starting point to develop our lactate threshold. And then all you are is simply going to take 95% of that average heart rate for your test, multiply it by 0.95, and you get your lactate threshold that you can now plug into your Kuros heart rate training zones. I'm adding a link in the show notes to the Kuros back office so you can see how they structure their six training zones. Yes, six training zones. I use eight, but I love to see that they're using six. A lot, of, a lot of companies out there only use five and that's not very functional. We can now really add that sixth zone and get some really good functional training. And that link in the show notes shows you how the zones correlate to the type of effort and purpose of your workout for the day. So again, if we, we take, let's take the example of 173 average heart rate for your test. Multiply that by 0.95 and you get your lactate threshold number that again goes into you, your Kuro's lactate threshold number to develop your heart rate zones or whatever system you're using. That's your lactate threshold. So now you not only have your VO2 max effort and velocity for heart rate, but now you have your lactate threshold number to work with. And now through time, you can see that improve. So it's as simple as that. And in a minute, when we get to Slide Lake, I'm gonna give you a little bonus tip on how I use the test results with my athletes to detect strengths and weaknesses.
this is a cool area I love where you start to get to some a little bit of red soil and red rock and it's always a cool contrast against the snow and the green and this is slide lake my turnaround all right i promised you a bonus tip let's go back to our field test the one mile test at the track and let's use my original numbers as an example let's say your average heart rate for that one mile test was 173 and your max heart rate during the test was 182. So that's a nine beat difference. And that nine beat difference is what I call your potential window. That's the window or the range that you have to improve. And this is why this field test is so good because you can measure it often and you can see improvement and you can improve your potential not only at your vo2 max effort but also at your lactate threshold so you're doing two two improvements with one test okay so how i use this as a diagnostic with my athletes whether they're just first starting with me and we're doing the initial test or through time is that i look at the the difference between their average heart rate of the test and their max heart rate of the test. And in our example, it was nine beats. That's a pretty big range. I would like to see that gap closed to more like four beats. Okay, and how I use this to develop strength and weaknesses. If it's a large window, like this nine beat difference, that tells me the athlete is lacking endurance that their potential is that 182 or close to their max for the test, but their average was a lot lower at 173. This tells me they're lacking endurance, so they need to do more base building. They need to do more endurance training to shift that 173 average heart rate closer to the 182. And that's what we wanna do is we wanna shift that number, that 172 closer and closer to our max heart rate for that test. And again, this is not our max heart rate. This is our max heart rate for the test. Big difference, okay? That's what's measurable. That's what's trainable. This is what's trainable. And then that directly reflects shifting that number of your lactate threshold up as well, which is what we want. So getting back to our example, strength and weaknesses. Conversely, if an athlete has a, a four or five beat difference that's really pretty good and kind of what we aim for that tells me the endurance is really good and that i would look at their history of what they've done maybe in the last three months and say okay hey their their endurance is really actually good therefore we start to infuse a little bit higher intensity training even if it's in base building where we can now maybe do more threshold types of work because their endurance is so good. We'll get into in future episodes of how to use heart rate, how to use wattage, how to, how to use speed, when to use them. All that's coming, but I wanted to leave you that with this, this good diagnostic troubleshooting tip, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, leave questions in the comments below. Those are always good. Let me get into your mindset of what, what your mind's thinking for future videos. Um, and as always, this is my turnaround point. So I'm going to sign off here, allowing my return trip to be for me. Okay. Settling in and just getting into the groove without filming. However, oftentimes I will see something worth videoing or something will pop up in my head. Maybe we'll see more, more wildlife or Hey, uh, uh, some real good point come pops in my head. So if you see this video as longer after this, you know, that something really good is ahead. Okay, if not, hey, just wanted to say thanks for watching. Over and out from Slide Lake, Grand Teton National Park, Jackson Hole, Born to Run World. See you guys next time. Well, our little herd came closer to the road. I'm just going to walk, not spook them too much. They're not going to cross the road because they got a snowbank, but should be okay.
it's okay. They're just checking me out. That's the same herd we saw after the original lone bison on the on the ridge. And our moose hunker down over over in the snow there. A little siesta. And our buddy's still up on the ridge. Hasn't moved much. Well, we'll end where we started.